In this video, I will take you through the design process of a Class A audio preamplifier. The role of a preamp is to be a voltage amplifier for weak audio signals. The amplified output signal is then sent to a power amplifier, which is capable of driving a speaker. The topology we will be using is called the voltage divider common emitter amplifier. This is a very popular topology because it's not very sensitive to the variations in beta of the transistor. The amplifier is also an inverting amplifier, which means that the output signal will be out of phase of the input signal. It's important to note that this isn't an exact science, and there will be quite a difference between what we calculate and what we will measure. For that purpose, I will validate the design with both a simulation and a real-life measurement at the end of the video. Before we start designing, we need to note down some design requirements to get started. The first requirement is the power supply voltage. For this example, we use 9 volts. The second requirement is the desired output impedance. This will for example be 10k ohms. The third requirement is what the gain will be of the amplifier. We will choose a gain of 10 times. The fourth requirement is the bandwidth. Because this is an audio amplifier, we want a bandwidth from 20 Hz to 20 kHz. So to start off, we know that the output impedance is 10k ohms. This means that R3 will simply be 10k. We also wanted the gain of 10. The gain of this amplifier is roughly given by R3 over R4. This results in R4 being 1k ohm. The next step will be drawing the DC load line for this amplifier. To find the extremes of this line, we have to find two variables. The maximum collector emitter voltage, called V cutoff, and the maximum collector current, called IC set. V cutoff is calculated when a transistor is off and no current flows through it. This results in an open circuit where no current flows through R3 and R4. And when no current flows through our resistor, there won't be a voltage drop. This leads to the cutoff voltage to be equal to the power supply voltage of 9 volts. To find the collector current at saturation, or IC set, we assume that the transistor is shorted and the maximum current is controlled by R3 and R4. This results in a current of VCC divided by R3 plus R4, or 9 volts divided by 10k plus 1k ohms, equals 818 microamps. To make sure we have maximum headroom, we have to bias to the middle of the load line. This results in calculating IQ at the middle of the load line. This is simply IC divided by 2, resulting in an IQ of 409 microamps. ICQ is all we need to continue, but it doesn't hurt to calculate the value for VCEQ. This is VCC minus IQ times R3 plus R4 equals about 4.5 volts. Now we know IQ, we can calculate the voltage drop across R4. This is simply IQ times R4 equals 409 microamps times 1 kilo ohms equals 409 millivolts. Now for the next step we calculate the voltage at the base. Because the difference between the emitter and the base of the transistor is equal to one diode drop, we can simply add 0.65 volts to the emitter voltage. This results in a base voltage of about 1.06 volts. What's left now is the voltage divider R1 and R2. Our rule of thumb is to draw about 10 times more current down R2 than the current going into the base of the transistor. This makes sure that the voltage divider is not loaded by the transistor and we can assume the voltage divider is ideal. To calculate this, we use the following formula of transistor beta times R4 over 10. F4 was already chosen to be 1k and we assume a beta of 100. This results in a value of 10k ohms for R2. All that's left is to finish the voltage divider by finding a value for R1. We already know the value of R2 and expected base voltage. To calculate R1, we use the formula of VCC times R2 over the base voltage minus R2. This results in a value of about 74.9k ohms. To finish the design, we need values for the coupling capacitors, so we can AC couple the audio in and out of the amplifier 
without disturbing the DC levels set by the bias. The input capacitor makes a high pass filter with input impedance or resistors R1 and R2 in parallel. The formula for the cutoff frequency of this filter is F cutoff equals 1 over 2 times pi times R1 in parallel to R2 times C1. Rewriting the formula for C1 gives us C1 equals 1 over 2 pi times R1 parallel to R2 times F cutoff. We want our lower cutoff to be 20 Hz, so the value of C1 will be about 900 nanofarads. The output capacitor will form a high pass filter with the input impedance of the next stage. It is unknown what impedance that will be, so we will assume that it's 10 times the amplifier's output impedance, giving us 100 k ohms. Again, our lower cutoff is 20 Hz, so we calculate for C2 a value of about 18 nanofarads. Of course, you can change both C1 and C2 into a way larger value to make sure all audio signals pass the amplifier stage without attenuation. Our completed schematic looks as follows. To test the design, it will first be simulated and after that, the circuit will be built and tested on breadboard. We will validate the gain of the circuit and the maximum headroom. We feed the simulation a signal with an amplitude of 100 millivolts. On the output we measure a signal with an amplitude of 841 millivolts. Dividing the output amplitude with the input amplitude gives the gain of the circuit. In this case, this is about 8.41 times, close to the calculated gain of 10. By making the input signal amplitude way higher, we can test the headroom of the circuit. This should be very close to the supply voltage of 9 volts. In this case, this is about 8 volts. I now built up the circuit on a breadboard with a 2N3904 NPN transistor. At the input is a signal of 100 millivolts peak to peak, and at the output I measure 912 millivolts peak to peak. Dividing the output with the input gives us a gain of about 8.9 times. The headroom is verified by overdriving the input of the amplifier and measuring the peak to peak voltage. This is about 8 volts, just like the simulation. In this table I put some parameters and the measure values of both the simulation and the breadboard circuit. It's visible how there is some tolerance between the values, but they are close to what we calculated. As I said before, designing with transistors is not an exact science, because there are many factors that alter the behavior of the circuit. In the next table I put all the parameters regarding this amplifier design. The max input voltage is the power supply divided by the gain of 10, equals 900 millivolts peak to peak. The input impedance is about 8823 ohms. The output impedance is about 10k ohms. The gain is about 10, and the bandwidth is from 20 to more than 20,000 Hz. Thank you for watching this video, and leave a like and subscribe if you found this guide helpful.